This video is to show you how to make a 1 to 25,000 custom map to put in your Garmin GPS in order to make route finding easier. Now most people buy their Garmin's with 1 to 50,000 mapping and here's a picture of a 2 kilometer square location in 1 to 50,000. You'll notice the footpaths are in a magenta color which is unfortunate in a way because Garmin GPS's display the route in that same color. There are no field boundaries there are no names of properties or very few so if I switch now to a 1 to 25,000 map you'll see the difference have the field boundaries, we have the roads, we have all the names of the farms and the properties. Footpaths are in a dotted green line. And for the same area, you might suspect you've got twice the information, but because it's we're talking a square area here, 25,000 versus 50,000, you actually get four times the information. So hopefully I've convinced you that you'll want to do this. You can get your 1 to 25,000 map from your Anquip mapping, assuming you have this. I've loaded a route, it's uh, Kenarth 11 miles, and I will choose the print command in order to capture that material. Instead of sending the information to my printer, I choose Microsoft XPS Document Writer and choose an appropriate zoom level. That wouldn't do. So you keep playing around until you get one that uh, is appropriate. Bearing in mind that you'll have the anchored information at the top on your print and the Ordnance Survey logo at the bottom which you'll want to crop off. So I'll just cancel that for the time being. I've observed the corners of the printable area by observing these values down the bottom which are the grid positions. And I want to put a horizontal line right across the center of the map starting and ending at an exact grid position. So each map will vary with respect to that. I'll cancel this for the time being. So what I want to do is put a, actually a route starting at 230-435 vertically. So I eyeball it as best I can observing the numbers at the bottom of the screen. start a route and carry it across to encompass the square area that I'm interested in. So I'm going to right click and end the route there. Now I've got two waypoints here. I probably haven't got the numbers exactly correct but I can, if I wish, edit them edit the values to make them an exact round figure. So I click on change value and I want 230 000, so not two more zeros in there, space and then 23500 and save that value. 230-435. The second one, I want to change that one to 280-435, so I round that off with two more zeros, space, and make this 435-00, and save that. It's created a route called 002, which is quite fine. I could also change the names of these uh, waypoints. So uh, I'll change this one to um, 
middle left and the other one to middle right just for identification purposes having done that I go back to my print command and I'm ready to print this area now we don't want the print to have the root on it or this horizontal line so we click on show data on map in order not to show the data on map so we just have a plain print of the map itself print and I'm going to put it in a folder that I've created specifically for my um, XPS documents and I'm going to name it Kenarth 11 Be sure to select from save as type XPS document. Now we got the map saved in XPS document format, we're going to convert it into a JPEG. So we use this little free software called Converter for XPS document, which is on the website. And go to File, Open, and locate the XPS document we just created. Here it is. Open. Now we click on File, Open, uh, I beg pardon, Convert to. Change the output type to JPEG and the resolution to 250. We click on Choose Folder button and we want to put this in the JPEG folder and we'll call it Kenarth11 and click on OK we can close this go to our Windows Explorer and there's the file down here it's named it 11xps dot one dot jpg so we can rename that and take off everything except 11 cannot 11 dot jpg now I'm going to open the JPEG I just created double click on it in my case it opens up Microsoft picture viewer has some nice tools I can autocorrect to harden up the image and I can also crop the image with the same menu so I'm going to pull this bracket down to the intersection of grid lines and this one also to the intersection of grid lines that I pre-selected now I'm going to zoom in to make sure I'm right on the position that I wish. A little bit off. And there's the top left. And we go down to the bottom right. and click on OK. Now we can view the whole image. Pretty well square. I'm going to harden up the image again. Save it. Check the properties. It's two and a half megabytes. If it exceeds three megabytes, pick on the picture menu and then resize. Now I'm ready to go to Google Earth and bring my image, overlay image, into that software. If 
first of all I'll open the routing question which is can Arthur Levin reload it in this case and I'm going to expand the folder where the root is stored and turn off the point uh, visibility right click on the path, the properties change the color and change the width of the path similarly with the horizontal line I'm going to change the path to something a bit thinner make that a dark blue and make that a value of 2 now I'm ready to bring in my image overlay so click on this button at the top here add image overlay browse and go to where the image of the JPGs are stored Kenneth 11 open this I'm going to copy its name from the path Control C to Control Control V to stick it up in the name box and choose the slider to adjust the opacity. These are what you call handles and this one allows you to move the image. The ones on the corner and on the sides if you hold the shift key down, you have to hold the shift key down and click and drag and you can size the image, it keeps the horizontal and vertical values proportionate and I want to align it with the ends of the root, the waypoints that I created in Anchorit. Now this uh, handle here allows me to rotate, you don't need the shift key to, to be held down to rotate or to move. Needs a little bit more manipulation. That's fairly close. Without this line one could simply align the roads on the JPEG with the roads in Google Earth and you get it pretty close but this is just a, a finer way of doing it and it's very useful in areas where there's not much definition in the way of roads so if I use the opacity slider to see how we're doing here in terms of aligning we can see that it's pretty good. If we feel we want to tidy it up further without the shift key pressed we can stretch the image to fine-tune it in its corners or on the edge pretty good and so is that so in this dialog box we now have to click on altitude and make the draw order which is the vertical height of the map above the map we're overlaying so we're overlaying a 50,000 map so we have to make this value larger so that this one takes precedence. Once I say OK, I can open my side menu and there it is down here as an image overlay. I right click on that and save place as and put it in a folder that's appropriate. 
now it's saved in that folder. We're almost finished. There's a little bit of software that allows us to tile that big image into smaller portions so that the clarity of the map on the GPS is so much easier to read. Garmin GPS's will address a hundred tiles and an image which is less than three megabytes and less than one million pixels. So there's a little bit of software that allows us to do this. It's called KMZ Factory and I can select the file that I just created which is uh, Kenarth 11 open it up and this will tile it into three horizontal tiles and three vertical tiles for a total of nine tiles. I create the KMZ file I'm saving it in the same location. Now that file is saved in the same location as the original KMZ. So when I put it on my GPS I want to make sure I choose the tiled file rather than the untiled file that came directly from Google Earth. So it was Kenarth 11 and KMZ Factory appends the name with the letters KF. So this is the one you want. This one you could delete if you wish. You simply copy that file Go to your GPS, Garmin folder, custom maps, right click and paste. You can then see the file on your GPS when you're at that location. You can see the map or you can see it in Basecamp. Here's Basecamp. I'll open that so you can see what we've done on the GPS. Closing the tutorial. This is the internal storage and Kenarth 11 is the map that we've just created. You can see the quality of it. And when you do that route, you'll be operating in a 1 to 25,000 environment. If there are any questions regarding this, you can email the webmaster on the Command and Ramblers website and that person will direct your request to myself and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching.